your seats. So good to be here this morning. Yes, Mark does have a wife and I am her. (laughs) See, his stomach hasn't grown because he's been looking after himself. No, it's because he's had me to look after him. But it's so good to be here. I, I really miss Warner, but I love Redcliffe. It's just like this pool. But I, but I, uh, Mark needs me to be with him. <laughs> and so, uh, yes, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the Word of God. And it is life, it is changing, it is faith. It is all that we need, oh God, as sustenance to our lives, oh God, to live the fulfilled life that you have for us. It's how we get to know you and how you love us, oh God, and how you teach us, oh God. And Father, I pray that today, this morning as I speak, that it will be be life into people's hearts and souls. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, you would agree with me that we're all different. We uh, have come from different cultures. We we like different foods. We, uh, some of us will speak a different language. Um, This morning, I'm speaking on lifestyle faith, a lifestyle of faith. And we're different styles of dressing. Dana and I have the same style of dressing. For those who don't know, we're wearing the same dress. Some of you this morning uh, like different tastes in home. Some of you have different styles of how you keep your home in the state. Some of you have different styles of working. Some of you are workaholics. Some of you need a bomb under you to get you a little bit working, a little bit like a couch warmer. Lifestyles define a person. You know, we go on a diet, we lose all this weight. I'm still waiting. We lose all this weight. And then we go, oh, I'm going to go on a lifestyle eating regime. I'm just going to eat rabbit food and more rabbit food. And we change our lifestyle in the way that we eat. Um, Some of you need to have help in that changing of a lifestyle. Each and every one of us have our own style and our own lifestyle. Clearly, lifestyles in the world will be very different from those as a Christian. We have different Lifestyles. The meaning of a lifestyle is the way in which a person lives and expresses that lifestyle. It pleases God that as His children, as Christians, as believers in Him, that we live a lifestyle of faith. We don't live out our faith only when we come to church but we live out our life of faith when we're at home, when we're at work, when we're in our communities, we're in the park, when we're at the gyms, wherever we are, we live that lifestyle of faith. Whatever you're called to do, wherever God leads you, you maintain a lifestyle of faith as a believer. As believers, we are always to step into that greater faith level that God has for us. Scriptural faith is trust and confidence in God. That's broken down. That's what faith means. I trust God and I have a confidence in Him. And faith is the assurance that the things revealed and promised in the Word of God are true even though I don't see them. It is by faith that we receive and become all that God desires us to be. It is by faith that we pull from heavenly realms and transform our earthly realm. It is by faith we walk according to the will of God. It is by faith that we move in demonstrations of God's power. It is by faith that we pick up our assignment that God has ordained for us and we walk that out. It is by faith that whatever God asks us to do, that we continue to partner with Him in that. I believe that it is our faith that is increased increases to impact our world around us. I believe that it is our faith as it increases, so will the spiritual gifts be outworked in us. And I want us to read from one of the most famous passages in the Word of God. They call it the Hall 
of faith. Imagine that, a hall of different men and women who lived a lifestyle of faith. And we're gonna look at Hebrews chapter 11, verses one to 10. And here we go. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. So that's what is seen, is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel bought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel will speak, still speaks even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. That'd be a cool way to go. For, save a lot of money with funerals. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive his inheritance, he, did, he obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and the builder is God. What a great passage of Scripture that reminds us that it is by faith, it's the lifestyle of faith that we live out. We see a whole lot of men, of patriarchs, looking forward to salvation, stepping out in faith, looking forward to salvation. It was by faith. They receiving the same salvation that we have today by faith. They did not see the cross. You see, they're looking forward to the cross. We look back to the cross. We've seen the cross. They never saw the cross. And they were looking in faith for what's to come in salvation through Jesus Christ. You know, all generations all over the earth and are all looking today back at the cross and are saved because of that. You know, this scripture describes that salvation came to the patriarchs by their faith looking forward. You know, in the New King James, it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's a deep-rooted persuasion Faith is not wishful, wishful thinking. I wish, I wish, I wish it comes to pass. I wish, I wish, I wish. It's not that. It's a firm, solid foundation, the substance that comes from the Word of God. You know, substance in the Greek is translated as two words that is meant to set underneath. You put something underneath and you rest on that. You know, you've seen this illustration so many times and it's a chair. I do not examine the chair and go four legs. Let me see if they're sturdy. No, no, no. I see a chair. I put my whole faith that I know it is, I tried it out, is going <laughs> to, no, no, I didn't, I didn't. It was faith. I know that it's going to hold my so many kilos. I know because I trust in this chair to do its job. When I get on a plane, I literally don't go, oh, I'm gonna put my faith in the air hostess today 
because I know it's in her that will get to my destination. No way. I don't put my faith in the chair that I sit in. I don't even put my faith in the engineering of that plane and that every part. I put my faith in the pilot. I put my faith because he's the one who's gonna take me to the next destination. I put my faith that he's studied the work manual and passed with degrees to be able to fly that plane. You see, that's what God wants us to do in our faith, in our Christian walk, that we put our faith, our confidence in Him, our substance that comes in Him, in the Word of God. Faith is not the glimmer of hope. It's a deep knowing that the promises of God are alive. What do we receive by faith? Number one, we receive by faith is salvation. By faith, we receive the free gift of salvation. Ephesians 2, 8 to 10 says, for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift from God. It's not by your works that so no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Number two, we see it's by faith we receive healing. Jesus' response to the woman with a the, with the bleeding issue of 12 years and when she touched the hem of Jesus' garment, She was instantly healed. We read in Mark 5, 34, he said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. It's faith that pleases the heart of God. You know, in Redcliffe, just like here, I'm sure it's been happening here, but we have had five miracles, recorded miracles in the last two weeks. We had um, Jean. Jean had uh, a hip. I was actually at the altar that morning that Pastor Corey Turner, we had him on live screen. And, and I was at the altar and I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, there are people with hip issues. And I'm like, yeah, duh, look at the age group here, you know, like, <laughs> I'm honest with God. And he says, I want to heal them. I stop right there. <laughs> okay, so I get up and, you know, like people could laugh at me going, y- y- like, honestly, look around. <laughs> you know, of course there's people with hip issues. But I had to use my faith in what God said to me. And I said, there are people here this morning that have uh, hip issues. God wants to hear you this morning. Several come to the front, pray, one gets healed, totally in constant pain, totally healed. Janine was at the keyboard and she's praying at the keyboard and she says, God, I need to be there, but I can't get there because they need me to play the piano. So you're gonna have to heal me here. And go and heal, like she felt healing, but she wanted to go home and test it out. She was running up and down her stairs all day, all afternoon, checking it out. At night she came to me, Nina is healed. Jean last week testified, Nina, there's still no pain, totally healed. Then we're praying and, you know, so many people came to the altar and then and then I see uh, Wendy. Wendy is uh, always has to walk. She lives in a nursing home, but she gets her little Uber to church and uh, she she's walked. She always comes sad-faced, Wendy, but with her walker, but she's in church, so we don't mind. We're saying, I'm going, who wants to testify of what God has done? And, and I, without, Wendy just walks across. I'm going, Wendy, there's no walker? And then I see Kerry taking her walker behind her, instantly healed that she could walk up and down unaided with her walker. But this is another good one. All miracles are great. And I wanna stir your faith. Doesn't matter what it is and how it looks like, you can still ask, keep on asking, keep on believing. We had Tony, Tony testified to me last week. He says, Nina, this is amazing what's happened to me. And so tell me, Tony, tell me. And he goes, I, and his wife Elizabeth was there. And, and Tony goes, I uh, could not hear from my ear. 
and I've been waiting to have a surgery done and in the public system, it's taking a really long time and his TV was causing, was causing a lot of trouble in his home because his TV was really loud and the neighbours were complaining every day, Tony, you need to turn it down. His wife was so embarrassed. So she booked, this is three weeks ago, Three, he was healed two weeks ago. Three weeks ago, she books for a, a ear, another consultation of how severe is this hearing? I mean, he can't hear anything now. And so Tony comes to the altar. The week after, he goes for his hearing test, an hour and a half. They're doing tests. They're doing all the tests that need to be done in a hearing test. And she just said, Tony, you've got perfect hearing. Total perfect hearing. Praise God. And he's, he's got the proof of it. He's got the proof of deafness. He's got the proof of healing. You see, God still wants to heal today. We had David who could hardly work in the pain in his knee. was so intense that he had numbers of days off and he really struggled to work. And David is only new back to Back, has come back, which I believe this year is the year of the prodigal. And I went to visit his uncle in hospital and he was there at the same time. And I said, David, where do you go to church? Oh, I don't go to church. And uh, he goes, I used to go to church many, many years to go to Redcliffe. And I said, well, it's time to get back into church. What are you doing? You know the truth. You walked away. What are you doing? You know you need God. The next following week, he was in church. We've got to be bold because they want to, but they're shameful. They're fearful. Right, But our welcoming, come back to church, I'll sit with you. He was in church, but he's had been able, unable to work because of his knee. So he goes to work, or has days off. And last Sunday, he, we're, we're praying, God, miracles, God, heal, God, salvations, God, and pop, totally healed. Runs to the front, testifies of the miracle power of God. Do you know God wants to heal you today? God wants to bring salvation to you today. God wants to restore you today. I, I love that straight after this healing of the woman with the issue of blood, Jairus, Jairus is bold to say, Jesus, you need to come and heal my daughter. By this stage, she is dead. So I don't know about you, but I've got enough intellect to believe that when someone is dead, they have no faith. Faith dies with dead people. We see here, it wasn't Jairus' daughter's faith. It was dad's faith. And sometimes it is your faith for someone else that God intervenes and does a miracle. I look at the paralytic man who was uh, lowered down through the roof by his friends. It wasn't the paralytic's faith. It was his friend's faith that lowered him down and he was healed. You know, it says we please God by faith. That's what brings a smile to his face is when we step into his will, believing and trusting in his word. Take him at his word. I refuse to hear when people say to me, oh, that was only in the New Testament church. Or that only happened to Naaman in the Old I refuse because my word, the word of God, the my word that I've placed substance in, hope in, confidence in, says, by his stripes you shall be healed. I know you're saying to me, but I believed my, my friend and they died. Well, they're healed today. I know that's horrible, but they are. I will not stop believing until a person's gone. Because I don't want to be the one who has little faith. I want to be the one with much faith. I want to be the one who, who filters out the lack of faith. And go, I don't know about you, but you need to get out the room like Jesus did. And he only had the three, Peter, James and John in the room because he knew they had faith to believe and see Jairus' daughter raised from the dead. So sometimes it's, Distance you, not, not blocking them, 
distancing yourself by their lack of faith. Take him at his word. I trust your character, God. I trust your nature, God. Therefore, I choose to step on to the promises and into the promises of God. The, the empowerment to live a lifestyle of faith. Most believers won't maximise the full potential of their faith because they're afraid. Well, what if they don't get healed? What if they die? What if, don't get caught up in the what if. Just believe, let God worry about the what if. God has made promise after promise after promise in his spoken word to your heart directly. So if you read it, promise will come in. If you read it, faith will come in. If you read it, faith will come in and fear will will leave. God does not want us to shrink back and allow fear to dominate. He said so many times, Jesus said, he got frustrated with his own disciples. And he says, you of little faith. He had to rebuke them. Called Peter, Peter, walk on water. Peter has faith. He hears Jesus say, Peter, walk on water. He begins to walk on water as if there was a cement floor under him. But as soon as he took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sink. And that's when fear comes in. When we take our eyes off of Jesus, off of the Word of God. This Word has such power, it caused all things to come in existence. This Word has such power that it holds everything together in time and eternity. This Word has so much power that when spoken, demons begin to tremble. This Word has so much power that martyrs have died for it. This Word has so much power that culture cannot cancel it. This word has so much power that the resurrected, that people who are dead can be resurrected from life. This word has power for every situation that you face today. But you need to put your confidence in His word, not your wishful thinking. This word has so much power that when doubters cannot take it, that doubters cannot take away its potency. I don't believe in the Word of God. You would have heard that. Well, you say, I believe in it because it's alive, living, active in my life. You know, I think of the children of Israel in Genesis chapter 14. They're standing in front of this big sea and they have the armies of Egypt pursuing right behind them. You know, they saw a sea, God saw a pathway. They began to complain and be afraid, but God simply breathed and caused the Dead Sea to split open so they can cross over. God is still the God who makes a way where there seems to be no way. You can choose to believe that or you can choose to be afraid and get ill and get stressed and close yourself in a house with no friends. Because that's what it does, isolates you into a small place. I think of the children of Israel walking around the walls of Jericho in Joshua chapter 6. Here they are told to march around these walls, these large walls. That's their inheritance behind those walls. That was their hope, believing God, the God of promise. You know, it didn't make sense because God said, shout on the last day, shout. So they march around. Didn't make sense. In their thinking, how are these walls going to come down? There are armies at their disposal. And God says, don't use the armies. I've called you to march around. They could have caused angels to come down, angelic hosts to push the walls down. God didn't want the angelic hosts to come down and push the walls down. He wanted them to march around. I could just imagine the scenario in that situation. You know, Omar would be going to uh, Ziv. Ziv! Walked around once. Ziv! Can you see a crack? 
No crack here, Homer. Come on, let's go again. Daniel, Daniel, next time. Daniel, can you see any rubble on the ground because it's trembling? Zeb, nothing here. Walk again. You see, it was by faith that they began and consistently, they never gave up on the first try. They never gave up on the second try. They never gave up on the third try. Some of them probably wanted to give up on the fourth try as they marched around. They didn't give up on the fifth. They were all in unity with the Word of the Lord, march around. On the sixth day, Zeb's going, oh my, at least something. Tell me something. Is there a little crack? Nothing, Omar. On the seventh day, they begin to shout and the walls come down. Imagine their faith, imagine their hope, imagine. But you see, they didn't have faith and hope after the wars came down. They had it right from day one. Even when Omar said, there's nothing, there's no crack. They still walked out in faith. So many people give up just before a miracle. I remember ministering to a, a couple, this lady actually, and... Uh, her husband had a business and they're both Christians, both church, attending church, both godly people. And her husband had so much work that he needed to work through the night. So one of his workmates said, hey, take a bit of this powder. It will help you wait, work through the night. So he took some. It helped him work through the night and he was pushing out his work night after night, taking drugs, pushing out all his work, getting so much work out. And what happened, as you could imagine, taking so much of illegal substance makes you go. <laughs> so what happened, he ended up in a mental institution because too much drugs will do that to you. And uh, his wife, we would pray together, we would believe together. She was holding on that he would come back. So by this time, he is, he's away from the Lord. He's uh, in a mental institution where Mark went to visit him. And you know that, that play school song that has a knife and a, a knife and a spoon and a fork and a hammer? And, you know, it goes like this, you know, I can't remember the song, but which one is different from the other? Which one is different from the other? You're supposed to say hammer because it's not a manner, right? So Mark didn't sing the song and who said to him, which one is different from the other? You know, in the home going, you're not meant to be here. You have God's purpose over your life. Just because you chose to take, doesn't God will forgive you, come back. And so over time, and, and he's in this home and she's believed. And in the end, she just said, I can't do this anymore. And she, she walks away, not only from faith, from God, from everything that she believed. She walked away from the Lord. She walked away from church. She, she went into a lifestyle that was just terrible, right? Three weeks later, who comes back into church? Her husband. Three weeks later, totally changed. Soul winner, leading the whole place, workplace, Leading gospel, speaking the gospel into their lives. Wherever he goes, he was transformed by the power of God. She, to this day, is still not walking with the Lord. He, to this day, is serving the Lord, walking with the Lord, serving in church. You see, sometimes we need to hold on and hold on because we don't know what's going to happen and not to give up, not to allow faith to be replaced with fear. Abraham left certainty, comfort, to go to a land he did not know. God said, go. Abraham said, okay. He had no idea where he was going. He left certainty. He left comfort and he stepped into faith. He stepped out on the Word of God. It is there that we will experience the miracle of the birth of a nation because of Abraham's faith. That's faith stepping out into the uncertainty. That's faith believing when at all odds there's a different report. That's faith when you're going to go to the end, I will believe 
in you, God. I will believe in your word. I will believe in your promises. I will believe that it is by your stripes that I'm here. I will believe in the promises of God. I will believe that you will never leave me and you'll never forsake me. I will believe in your word today. Peter in Matthew 14 stepped out of the boat and into the storms of instability. How many times do we walk into instability, not knowing what's going to happen in different situations. But how many times we've allowed fear to come in and keep us back because we're scared of what is ahead. Peter's boldness, he had the boldness to step out. We sometimes look at the storms, we look at the waves, We look at the bank account, we look at our children, we look at our workplace, we look at our circumstance, we look at our bodies. And we take our eyes off of Jesus, off of faith, the substance that it is in Him, and we put our eyes on the fearful situation that we're confronted with. And as I said to you, it's only when Peter took his eyes off of Jesus that he began to sink. I'd rather be that person who steps out in a lifestyle of faith. If I was to get a bad report from the doctor, what I would do is I would go home. I would tell Mark, I would tell my kids, I would gather them around the table and we would have a prayer meeting. Then I would ring the intercessors of the church. And I'll get them to pray because you see, I will not allow people with fear to dominate my faith and take over my faith. And whatever the end may be, I will still hold faith to the very end because I believe He is a God that heals today. I believe He is a God that saves today. I believe He is a God that transforms lives today. Peter wasn't walking on the water. He was walking on the Word. Peter, come. That was the word, chose to trust Jesus. David steps out in faith and slays a giant. The result is that Israelites won the battle of intimidation. You have intimidation in your life? Speak faith, speak word, speak promise. Noah steps out in faith and he builds an ark. Noah had no idea what an ark was, an ark. What's that? Downloads through uh, God Intel, the dimensions. Why do I need to build an ark? Because there's gonna be rain. (laughs) What's rain? You see, Noah had no idea what an ark was. He had no idea what rain was, but he obeyed and he built the ark. The whole, his whole household was saved because and preserved humanity. Today we are a result of preserved humanity because of Noah's obedience. Daniel in the lion's den, instead of destruction, it became a turning point. These are people of faith. You are people of faith. If you choose to live a lifestyle of faith, push fear out, get a word, get a personal word from God because it's that that you can stand on. It's that you can sleep with. It's that that will go over and over in your mind. I love meeting people who have got reports that are pretty much death sentence over their life. But you know what? They speak life. I I love talking to Judy, Judy Bedville. She is uh, not carrying the best reports in her health. But when when I call Judy, She's always praising God about something. Oh, you hear about this and this, what's happened? And I talk to her, like, believe. Why? Because she hasn't given up. She knows her report. She has read the report. She didn't give it to Simon and said, file that away. She read the report, but she read this report. She read this report. And whatever happens, she's good because she has read this report. In seasons of difficulty, in time, it's time where God's people begin to shine because we've 
read the report. When everyone else is losing their peace, we are rooted in Christ. We are rooted in faith. We stand boldly in the promises of God. Not only does it protect us, it provides for us. God and His promises us trustworthy. People say, I believe it when I see it. Faith says you will see it when you believe it. Faith is how your spirit begins to see it, not your natural eyes. Faith is how your spirit knows. Faith is not a wish, it's a substance. Fear expects the worst possible outcome. Faith expects the miracle. Fear freezes, faith moves it. Fear looks to survive, faith seizes opportunities. Fear asks what if, faith declares even if. You know, recently, well, it was actually only last week, um, there's a lady in, in our Redcliffe location and uh, she, was mo- she was supposed to move into her house and uh, on the f- 10th of January, and then they rang her and said, oh, it's, the house is not gonna be ready. But she already, she already gave up her rental home. Like for that day, she finished her contract with a rental home. And so she was gonna be homeless and she was actually living in a, sh- in a shed with a neighbour, in a neighbour's shed with a disability daughter and a young boy. And she, I, she came to church and I hadn't like, because I'd been away and she, I hadn't seen her and she came while I was away. And she told me the story and, and we were able to bless her. And I just said to her, I said, I said, I believe it's gonna come a compensation for what's happened to you. Because you were supposed to be in your house, right? Right, you were supposed to be in and they did the wrong thing. They didn't appoint another person to f- finalise it. So I'm believing a compensation. I could see her look at me and going, oh, I don't know if I can believe for that, you know? I go, it's all right, my faith, <laughs> my faith. Believe it. And then, and then about three days later, uh, she says, Nina, you, you, you do not believe what just happened. So I said to her, ring the agent again and say, listen, your situation. She did that, but it wasn't anything came through. They were just, no, nah, not gonna happen. You're not moving into the 17th of March. She is homeless with a disability, with a child with disabilities, right? Living in a hot, I'm sweating with air conditioning. Imagine that. And she rings me and she goes, Nina, I rang my insurance company and I just said, this is a stab in the dark, but I felt to ring you, I ring you. It's what, this is my situation. And the lady said, just, you know, leave it with me. And the lady then rang back and said, I didn't even know this was in your insurance, in your insurance uh, contents or clause, whatever it's called. It says, you will be compensated in hardship. But you gotta hear this. She's been living in a, a tin shed with the kids, and she felt to step out in faith and hire Airbnb on in in Redcliffe, Airbnb, and they're not cheap in Redcliffe. They're not cheap. You think Redcliffe, old Redcliffe? No, let me tell you, place to buy, get the oldest house. <laughs> so she's in an Airbnb, and she has stretched it for another week. She goes, Nina, I'm literally living my faith to because I can't watch my kids cry anymore. She's living in this and the lady said to her, this is awesome, talk about compensation. The lady said, they are prepared for you to live in that house, in that Airbnb, right up to you move in whenever that date is. How good is that? You see, God is not just interested in the miracles, in the finances but he's interested in where we live. He's interested for our children.